and here's how this works. You put it, I know Linda surprised me too when I found out about it. You put it in this warm water with a, a, and you bring this back very carefully. And then you go to that big beautiful plant that you have on the patio or somewhere, you know, where it's just growing and the leaves are out there, and you stick it. You know, you can't get there with a normal watering can. Oh no. You stick this right in the middle of that plant, and you very slowly feed that plant. And this, my friends, is an exotic plant waterer. So the next time you see one, you'll know exactly what to do with it. Don't assume that it is for the playground or for the water pool. So Bonnie, we are putting those to use. Our youth will be watering our grounds with, the, it's good for succulents too because they don't need a lot. And you just go directly right in with just a little warm water. That way we're not wasteful. So, okay. So let's unpack and look at what Don Miguel Ruiz has for us when he talks about assumptions. Assumptions. The power, the presence, the key to ask for clarification in whatever venue you may find yourself. It sounds like this. Now, is this what you want me to do? Is this how you'd like it done? Is there anything else I need to know? Is there some equipment, perhaps, that I need in order for me to do this job? That's the kind of question that leads us to clarification where the ending product or idea matches what the person set it out to be. How many of you have that happen just regularly in your life? You say this, and it happens. You say this, and it happens. No? Well, I'm here to say that Toltec wisdom can help with that. Check in. Check in. Because, you see, friends, we are less set in concrete than ever before. Our lives, our ideas, the way we work in the world. Have you noticed? We're mostly like in a jello state. Things are changing. People are changing. You're updated. We're updating our records. How many of you get what's your newest email? What's your, we're updating our records. We're updating our records. Happens all the time because we're moving. So why would we assume that you are today the way you were yesterday? I have a friend whose favorite comfort food, when she gets into it, situation is macaroni and cheese. And I do a reasonable macaroni and cheese. So I called her and I said, I'll be right over. I've got macaroni and cheese. I've got a little plant. I've got some choir chocolate. I'll be right over. Assuming that that's what she wants because she's always wanted it that way. I was so surprised. Text message. Dear Suze, don't come. Excuse me? I'm the best friend. I was on the cusp of overriding her request and how often we do that because I know what's best with her. I know the healing properties in my macaroni and cheese. I know how good our choir chocolate is. How dare she say, don't come. So I had to sit about that. I had to call Silent Unity. Silent Unity, it's me again. Oh, good morning, Rev Seuss. How's it you Kaipa? And have a prayer. And so I texted her back and said, I so understand. I didn't, but I was getting warm. <laughs> and so call me when you're, when you're ready. So she called back and we had a conversation. And it turns out she doesn't eat macaroni and cheese anymore. Well, I have about this many things that I could cook for you. <laughs> That's it. That's it. After that, you know, I have to go shopping. But the idea was we're current with each other. Does that make sense? We have to stay current with the situation and people in our lives because they change. Diets change. Circumstances change. Friends change. Girlfriends, boyfriends, schools. So checking in with your loved ones is always a good idea. What's up? How can I be of service to you today? What are you eating these days? <laughs> Gluten-free, not this, not that. So. Anyway, what are you doing with your life where I can be of assistance, not a hindrance? Times are coming up. It's the holiday. Our, our um, 
logo, not logo, but if you will, we are celebrating, we are harvesting the holidays this year. That idea is going to lead us through October, November, December, harvesting the holidays. And we'll let you know more how that's going to look like because there are lots of wonderful things to do. But let's take a look at Thanksgiving. Let's take a look at Christmas. How many of you are, are in? We've always done it this way. But, but we always eat at Aunt Ethel's because she, but we always, and so-and-so always brings their bean, and we always, and you can set a fever pitch with your friends and family if you interject, well, let's do something different. Oh, <laughs> different? Let's change? Let's not eat at Aunt Ethel's? Oh, my goodness. Let's just, let's just invite the idea. Just kind of move with it. How many of you are kind of ready to do something different? Well, I don't know. How does Aunt Ethel feel about it? Aunt Ethel is thrilled. It was her idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you move to a new idea, and you don't assume that it always has to be that way. You stay in tune and in touch with what's happening with your family, your friends, and your heart right now. Right now. No, you're a growing, evolving person. Most of the cells that you had with you yesterday are already gone, and you have newbies on the block. <coughs> you have cells in your body right now that are showing people around. Ah, a new heart cell. Here's how we do that. Beat in, beat out, beat in, beat out. Ah, new lungs. Here's how we breathe. Breathe in, breathe out. No, no. And here's the other part. So is your friend. They're brand new, so you have to treat them as your new friend. I mean, you may look into their old face, but they're your new friend. <laughs> and you say, how can I serve you now? What would you like now? You look fabulous. I understand that you've been on this great new diet. What do you eat? No, no macaroni and cheese. I'll see no muffins. I can make them gluten-free. No fire chocolate. I'm out. Let's go to lunch. I'll buy whatever you're eating. <laughs> not making assumptions. We have a great exemplary story in the Bible about making assumptions. It's the one where Jesus was 13, already very aware of his spiritual path and what that would entail. The family was gathered in Jerusalem. That was the city of the Jews, and so they went there for many occasions and they had their celebrations. The family... Joseph and Mary and all were on their way back to their home, to Nazareth. So Joseph and Mary are having coffee one morning at their local Starbucks, something like this. And so Mary says, so Joseph, have you seen Jesus? And Joseph says, no, I thought he was with you. No. So they asked the kinfolk who were gathered around at Starbucks, have you seen, no, I thought he was with you. Well, uh, last time, no, gosh. As a matter of fact, I haven't seen him since Jerusalem. Oh, man. Two days trek back to Jerusalem. Where's Jesus? Studying with the rabbis. So here's where both of them made an assumption. They assumed he was with them. Mm. Not. Don't ever let your teenager out of your sight. <laughs> He's 13. He assumed when they find him that they would know where he was. What did he say to them? Did you not know that I would be in my father's house? They didn't. They didn't have a clue how deep and how solid the foundation he was building to be a spiritual leader. They didn't realize he would rather be in that synagogue day and night than any place else on his earth at that time. So his parents, they assumed you'd be with us. After all, we're the parents. So Jesus... I assumed you'd know where I'd be. You know how much I love studying. Both of them. Confusion. Angst. I'm sure when he got home, he was grounded for a period of time. That's what we do when people, especially children, misbehave, when maybe, friends, we're not clear on what we're saying to them. Don Miguel Ruiz says in his work, that he believes if all of us would learn to clearly, clearly, he 
is the operative word. Communicate. Most of the wrath of the world would be eradicated. What do you think about that idea? If every single one of us took responsibility and I said to Ron or to Mary or Denise, now, here's what I'm feeling. How are you doing with that idea? How would you like this done? Is this the way you saw it? Is this your vision? We would check in. We would ask. We would make sure we were clear before we did anything. How many of you think that would make a profound difference in the world? Yeah. How many think it would make a profound difference in your relationships with the people that you love? Yeah. Instead of calling and saying, Tamara, I know you're sick. Protecting, I know you're sick. I'm coming with that macaroni and cheese no matter what. Instead of saying, Tam, I love you. How can I be of service? You want flowers? You want a little foot massage? What can I do? You want me to rent a movie? There's always quiet chocolate. She loves our quiet chocolate. She and I are the biggest investors in quiet chocolate. How would that be? If you just ask the question, is this what you want? No, I never wanted that. I've always given it to you. I know, I've never wanted it. <laughs> I had a friend who used to give me almond roca for Christmas. At, at that personal time, I was a, it's milk chocolate, you know, almond, and I'm a dark chocolate girl. But I would take it. And little did they know that every Christmas I would gift it. Change the wrapping, change the bow, new car, off it goes. But she never asked me. Because I never gave it back and said, you know, I love you, I love your friendship, but I hate this. I would gift it every Christmas. So let's just stop that right now. Let's just meet for lunch. You can take me to lunch. Because that's not inexpensive. I mean, you pay 10 or $12, and big 10 to pink and all of that. So... We restored and made that relationship stronger because we were authentic with each other. Does that make sense? People need to know what you're about. But we're afraid to let people know because then they may not like us. But who's the most important person that has to like you? You. you. Thank you. Front Row does a really good job here. This is the choir, so literally, I'm preaching to the choir. But you have to be there. You have to win. We make assumptions because candles of courage. We don't have the courage to ask questions. When I was in ninth grade algebra, I failed algebra. It was one of those little grades that have changed that I've talked to you about. I unpacked some of my ugly, just so you'll know that there's no halo anytime soon. I failed it, not because I'm not smart. I'm smart, and I'm good at numbers. But Chubby Suzanne sat at the back of the class, and Mr. Farley wrote very indistinctly with his chalk. We had the chalkboards back then. Yeah. So. And I would look at those algebraic equations, and I would copy down x plus 3 instead of x plus 8. Do you see how that can happen? I was smart. But I couldn't see the board till we finally figured it out. I needed glasses, and I wore some kind of glasses. But but see, you make assumptions. Oh, that's Sue Thomas. She is so stupid in math. No, she can't see the board. <laughs> Simple. But at the time, you see what the assumption was. I was almost held back. Oh, we can't go on. She's brilliant in English and all that, but, but math, she doesn't know math. We can't possibly. Because I couldn't raise my hand and say, could you write a little darker? Could I sit closer? You know, Mom and Dad would ask about homework. How are you doing? Fine. Everything's fine. I'm doing great. Yeah, oh, fine. Algebra, no problem. Because, and that was the frustrating part for me, is I didn't know that I couldn't see. I thought everybody was seeing a three instead of an eight. You see how, how that happens? It can color your whole day. It can color your whole life. You keep making wrong assumptions. Here's another assumption that, that uh, gets to us. We assume that if we just love them enough, that they will change. How many of you have explored that one? Mm -hmm. 
How many of you have had success with that one? <laughs> Not me. Nope. No matter what, they're going to do, you're going to do something because you choose to. And you, I'm not saying don't love someone, but don't love to change. And don't love to, if I love them enough, long enough, you'll grow old together, and they'll be the same. And you'll be frustrated as heck. I've loved that sucker for 58 years, or 10 years, or five. Five minutes is too long to love in that way. Now, if I just love them enough, they're going to do this, and when we get married, we're going to do this, and no. This is the deal. Take it or leave it. What are we afraid of? Having someone leave it. Yeah, yeah. So, so we don't. So we just say, I, I just love them. Just love them. They'll change or they're... Can you live with them kind of not putting always the toothpaste cap back on? Can you live with them maybe not drying the, or loading the dishwasher the way you want? Do you know the divorces that happen over he doesn't load the dishwasher the way I like? Seriously, please. Or his clothes aren't coordinated. Well, what are his mind and heart look like? Or her mind and heart look like? Let's weigh in on the important things and leave people's lives alone. I have plenty to do in God's plan for me. Do you? Is your, I mean, do you? Here's the acronym for what we're studying today. It's ADD. And if you add, not assuming things to your life, that sounds like an oxymoron, but if you ask, and the first person you ask always is God, and then you receive direction in prayer and meditation through God, and then you go ahead and you do what your directions gave you to do. You ask. Your friends, your neighbors, your loved ones, how can I serve you today? What would you like? What would you like? And then they tell you. And then you do it. And then you're in prayer again, and you lit your candle of courage, and you ask again, how can I serve this person? What would you have me do? And you don't assume that you know. You don't know what's best for anybody, even our children. We don't know. We guide them. We listen. They talk. We listen some more. They talk some more. And day by day, situation by situation, we come to know them, love them, and embrace them, and allow them to live their life. Don't assume that you know. You know what's best for you, and for me these days, that's good enough. Because then I can stay focused, and do what's mine to do, and allow you to gift the world in your special and personal way. I look out at you, there are writers, and there are students, and there are grandparents, and wonderful people on spiritual journeys. I pray for you every day, and I allow you your life, and I'm right beside you praying, watching you evolve. That's the greatest gift, loving them, not changing them. Here's another one. We make assumptions that everyone sees life, especially since we're out there and we're buoyant and we're positive and unity. We make assumptions that everybody sees life the way we do. That everybody sees this as the greatest time to live and lots of good things going on and people are good and we want to do the right thing and I serve spirit. Not everyone sees it that way. And like not taking an assumption that you know what's best for them, we can't make them see it our way. Our view of life is unique as our thumbprint. Unique. Gifted. That doesn't mean that we're right and they're wrong. If you don't see it my way, excuse me, I'm sorry, we have to talk, we'll have coffee, because you need to see it my way. No. I appreciate your way. It's unique and perfect and special for you. And, and I have my way, and you have your way, and we can still have coffee, and we can still dance, and we can go to classes together and movies. You seeing it your way, and me living and seeing it my way. Perfect. Perfect. So Miguel Ruiz says, 
in not making assumptions. So we have to explore. We have to weigh in. We have to ask. And then once we have our answer, we do it. And we allow everyone else their answer. We love them. We pray for them. We light candles. And then we let it go. We call silent unity. Please pray for them. I know. I, I send you letters. You receive letters for me. Please pray for them. And then I've gone as high as I can go. I don't know of a higher power than God right now. The universe, and God is known by many names in many places. But it is that good, beneficent feeling of wellness, of wholeness, of love. It doesn't matter what we call it. But it matters that we're in service to it. Does that make sense? Okay, so here's the acronym I want you to remember. A-D-D. -D. Ask. Ask. Go to God. Ask. Pray. Light a candle. Light a courage candle. Because <clears throat> some of you, I can feel it on my heart, some of you have some serious things to start asking about. Mm -hmm. You do. So you ask. And then you receive direction through prayer. You can call a trusted friend and say, I'm, I'm thinking about this, so I just let me bounce it off of you. Try and be objective. Usually, you know, if you tell me, you know, now you know me and kind of give me a, give me a thought. But God first. Holy Spirit first, whatever that is, get in connection. So you ask, you receive direction, and then you do. Add, add energy and vitality to your life by knowing what is yours to do and not being 10 miles down the road going the wrong way. Oh, gosh, now i got to go all the way back. Time, energy, gas. No, give me directions. How many of you say when you're going someplace, give me directions? Or do you say, oh, don't worry, I'll find it. Well, if you're going someplace special, they hope you find it that day at the appointed time. You don't want to be in the wall, I'll find it. Oh, don't worry, I know my way around town. That's what I said when I went to Sacramento the first time after being gone for a while. Hello, born and raised there. Don't worry, I know J Street. Not. <laughs> they changed it. They have a little turnaround. It's only one way now. I almost got ticketed until I said, I grew up here, I went to McClatchy High School, I'm so sorry, it used to be too way now. No, you don't. You have to ask directions. Get me there. I'm here, there's where I want to go. Not, I'll find it. Don't worry. I know my community. No. Why? Because I want to be there. I don't want to almost be there. I don't want to be there when the lights are going out and the janitor said, oh, you missed it. It was four hours ago. Oh no, where you want is down the street, and I think they're finished with that meeting or that whatever it is. Add energy to your life by asking, getting directions, and following them through. I know you'll do it this week, and I'll love you through it, and I can't wait to hear the wins that will be happening when you ask, when you get direction, and when you follow it through. God loves you, and so on. Amen.